Good morning, it's Saturday, October 9th, 2021. Vitold and I just got back from hiking 6.2 miles and we'll soon be leaving to follow the Adirondack Railroad's Utica to Thundera train. He's resting up right now, but he'll be ready to go in a short while. Of course, as mentioned in uh, previous videos, today's Adirondack Railroad is a designated operator of 85 miles of former New York Central Railroad Adirondack Division tracks. The New York Central operated on the Adirondack Division from 1893, one year after the railroad was built, until 1968 for a period of 75 years. As you can well imagine, many different kinds of freight were carried by the New York Central over this time period. I contacted Tim Mayers, who is a co-author of this fine book, New York Central and the Adirondacks, and I asked him if he could give me a few comments about the kind of freight carried over the years by the New York Central Railroad on its Adirondack division. He tells me, as you might imagine, again, there are all kinds of goods transported. He writes, obviously the forest industry was a big part of what was hauled anything from logs, pulpwood, bark, and finished lumber. Liquid propane, gasoline, and coal used for heating. Stone, granite, sand, and gravel. The granite coming from the Oneida Pink Granite Quarry in Woodgate. Ice was a big commodity during the winter season. Tim remembers seeing a way bill from Gabriel's for a carload of Christmas trees as well. Tim mentioned that uh, one interesting way bill that he saw was for a load of hay coming down from Quebec in 1924 and it was used by the horses employed by loggers back in the days before we had uh, modern skidding equipment. But there was uh, also for a period of time in the 50s another unusual or a very unusual commodity carried by the New York Central and we're going to learn a little bit more about that a little later on in this uh, in the video. Well, be told and I are back in Forceport, New York at Pit 4. As mentioned last week, this is a new location for me. And I really like really like it here. There's a nice long straightaway that I can catch the train coming up on. And be told improves as well. And he's not eating grass. Come on, bud. Today's train is going to have two Mohawk Adirondack and Northern engines. As the sole power, engine number 2453 will be at point, and number 2042 will be in the second spot. Now, number 2042 has an interesting history. It's known by some as the atomic engine since it was the star, if you will, of late 1990s NBC miniseries called The Atomic Train. So we're here a little early plenty of time to set up and catch the Adirondack train in a little while. Again, this location is called Pit 4, so named because an old quarry operation was located here. We are along the former Adirondack division of the New York Central Railroad. 
regular passenger service ended here in 1965. The New York Central merged with the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1968 to form Penn Central. In 1972, Penn Central filed to abandon this stretch of track. New York State eventually acquired title. For a two-year period, about late 1970s, early 1981, the Adirondack Railway, as opposed to the current operator called the Adirondack Railroad, operated passenger service between Utica and Lake Placid. And then in 1992, the Utica and Mohawk Valley chapter of the National Railway Historical Society helped jumpstart passenger service again on a portion of this line just a few miles south from Thera, from Thundera for a few miles south and back. Eventually that led to what became known as the Adirondack Scenic Railroad and which today is known as the Adirondack Railroad. So what exactly was that unusual cargo carried by the New York Central on these tracks in the 1950s. Well, bananas. And not just a few crates of bananas, but 50 to 60 ice river reefers, refrigerated boxcars full of bananas that were loaded onto the New York Central and Weehawken, New Jersey, came up to Utica. And in Utica, it was given the, the train was given the symbol UM1 for Utica Montreal 1. And it was a daily train for about five to six years in the 1950s. The power was Alco FAs in an ABBA configuration. The crew that got on in Utica operated up to Malone, and that was a crew point change took the bananas up to Montreal from that point. So in addition to being big on hockey and beer, the Canadians around Montreal were certainly big on bananas and the railroad, in particular the New York Central, help satisfy that Canadian craving for a time in the 1950s. And I'd like to thank my friend, veteran railroader, recently retired, and avid rail historian Doug Allison for information on those New York Central banana trains. Well, be told, wasn't that something? Time to call it a day and head home.
I think you're ready to sleep for a while after walking six miles this morning. It's putting up with me coming up here for sport. So thanks a lot. Sunday, October 10th. We told and I are back here at Pit 4 in Forceport, New York. We're gonna try to get a different, a slightly different vantage point of the train today. They are running with the Mohawk Adirondack and Northern engines again. And uh, Vitol uh, was very impressed with the foreign power on the Adirondack yesterday. We are approximately a tenth of a mile north from yesterday's shooting location, about 33 miles from Utica. Today's Utica to Thundera trip does not have a layover in Thundera. Many of the trains from Utica have a four hour layover in Thundera. They leave at 9.30, four hours in Old Forge, and then back to Utica about 6.30. Today's train left Utica about noon and should return by about five o'clock. So, I'm thinking that this would be a good spot to catch the southbound. Probably have to wait a little over an hour. But, the VTOL doesn't really mind a little bit of a wait. And neither do I. So on the return trip we should see the multi-colored Mohawk Adirondack and Northern number 2042 at the point. Again, this engine is referred to by some as the atomic engine since it played an important part in an NBC miniseries which aired in the late 1990s called Atomic Train. Oh, another rail fan has showed up. Hopefully VTOL won't be too interested in going over to meter. And I see the train is
coming right now. So let's see what this deer does. Hopefully she'll make the right move. And she has. She's moved off the tracks. Well, she wasn't on the track, she was just to the side of uh, one of the rails. It was happy ending for the deer, for the video, and be told's ready to go home. Well, I'm sure glad engine 2042 didn't nuke that deer. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was another good weekend to be trackside. I enjoy reading the comments to the videos, so uh, please keep on commenting. And for those who don't usually comment, and even for those who do, I'm curious to know where you're watching this from, what state or country. The Adirondacks, Utica to Thundera trains will. And next weekend. However, the Adirondack season is not over yet, as there will be plenty of Polar Expresses taking place in November and December. So until next time, this is Railroading Rambler and Vtold out.